Good afternoon, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the Keller Williams Command 66 Day Challenge 3.0, Day 21. Uh, yesterday, we talked about um, opportunities with regards to documents and specifically DocuSign. So, we're going to continue that trend today. So, once we get into our opportunities here on the left hand side, you can see the handshake icon. We're going to jump into the opportunity that we created earlier in the week. And we're going to go to the Documents tab. And once in the Documents tab, I can click on the Go To Transaction. Earlier in the week, we linked this opportunity to DocuSign. And so when I click on Go To Transaction, it's going to open my DocuSign room. Yesterday, I showed you guys how to add documents into your room. And so once those documents have been added, you can just click on each one of them independently and begin to fill out any of the missing blanks. So a lot of that information does get auto-populated for you. So you can see here's the street address and city already in. Now I can put in name of property owners association. I can actually type that in. And then I can tab over and put in a phone number. If I'm submitting this offer, I might want to check box four. Let's just say they're willing to pay $250 a transfer fee and they're gonna ask the seller to pay any additional costs. So now I have filled out that document. I can click on save and close. And I would go through the same process with each of the other documents that I have loaded into my room. So I would fill out all the blanks on all of these documents. Once they've all been filled out, now it's time to begin sending them off for signature. So first I'm gonna to have to drop in initials and signatures where they need to go. And then from there, I can send them off. And so in order to get to the signing portion of DocuSign, I'm actually going to have to choose one, or I can choose select all, and it'll choose all of the documents. By clicking in this circle in the top left-hand corner, I can choose which documents I wanna work with. And by unchecking them, I can say I don't want to work with them. I don't know if you noticed, but when I clicked on the document, a new toolbar pops up right here in the middle. Okay, so you won't be able to actually see the docu-signing portion of things until you begin to click on documents. So let's just say I wanted to have those two documents. Oops, I think I misclicked. I think it's going to open that document. I don't need it to. All right, so here are the three documents I want signed. I'm going to go ahead and click on the docu-sign uh, little button here. It's the pin button. So once I click on that pin button, it will take me into the actual kind of signing and uh, assigning and signing portion. Actually, I lied. First, it opens up my envelope. So the envelope is where all of your documents are going to be. This is how you're going to address the envelope, who's it going to, and what do you want to have on it. I would highly recommend changing this envelope name to whatever's inside of it. So this might be initial contract docs, and I might even put a date on it just so that when I go back into my room later and look at all of my envelopes, I can clearly differentiate them from one another. Now you can see I have three documents already loaded into this envelope. If there were additional documents inside my room that I wanted added to the envelope, I would just click on Room Docs. And you can see here are the three that are already in there. These are the three that are not. I could click on each one of these and click on Add Selected. Now it's going to show six documents, seven documents inside, or six in my room. If I had created a template, and we'll show a video on that, but if I create a template, I could click on use a template. And then you can see I actually have a couple of templates already created. So let's say it's the broker notice template that I want to use. I can click on add selected. And now that template shows up as well. So you can see I've got six forms and one template inside of this envelope. Next, I want to add the recipients to the envelope. So if I click on add recipient and choose room participants, you can see I get the full list of people that are available from the details portion that I filled out yesterday. So this is going to the seller. So I'm going to make sure that I always include myself as the listing agent and then seller one and seller two. I'll click on add selected and you'll see they'll bring in these recipients. This number here on the little box is the order in which people are going to get the documents. So as of this setup, we would all get the document at the same time. My recommendation is you always put yourself first and put your clients second. That way, just in case you review the documents when they're sent to you, a lot of times just for some reason, I notice things that I might have not have noticed previously 
when I go to review the document, I have the ability to add in check boxes, text boxes, initials, etc. So I'm going to put that we all need to sign. And then at the very bottom, what do I want this to say? So it may say, um, please sign, please review and sign all initial contract docs. Here's the offer documents. Please review and sign. Let me know if you have questions, all right? So the next step is to click on next. So once I do that, and for some reason, this little button, I've got to click twice. So the second time I click it, it takes me into the actual signature portion. There it goes, now it's loaded. You can see at the top left, there are three people involved. I have myself, I have Daffy, I have Donald. So let's start with Daffy. I can scroll down here, and if I'm looking at it as the agent, I can be like, oops, uh, maybe I wanted to, there's a checkbox that I didn't check, or there's a text box, right? So I have the ability as the agent to bring in, right, a checkbox. I can bring in a text box. This all probably looks very familiar if you've used dot loop before. Okay, so in this case, this document is completely filled out correctly. I'm working with the buyer, so I want to bring over Daffy's signature, and I'm going to drop that right here. Maybe I make it a little bit smaller so it fits there, All right? And then I want to grab Donald's signature, and I'm going to bring his right there. All right, and then we have the information about brokerage services. Oh, it looks like I didn't get this filled out, so I could always come in if I wanted to and basically click on all of these boxes and fill in the actual text boxes. Obviously that would take considerable more time than it would doing it the other way, but just a good example is if you missed a box or two. If you need initials such as this document does, I would bring in the buyer initial and the buyer's other initials. Right, so now I have the buyer's initials on this document. That one also wants a date, so I can click on date signed. And I'll drop that one here just so we know when Donald signed it. Let me click on Daffy and I'll drop date signed here so we know when Daffy signed it. All right, so that's basically how you go through and you add in the initials, the text boxes, signatures, whatever the document is looking for. Once you've gone through, make sure all your blanks are filled out, all your initials are in place, all your signatures are in place, everything is checked correctly, you can come up to recipient preview, which is what I typically do just to see, okay, what is the document actually going to look like one last time just to make sure that I got everything correct. Once I'm done with that, I can basically go back. Oops, it took me all the way out. Let me click on next. Let's see if that actually saved. And it did, good. So once I'm in recipient preview, I need to click on this X and I apologize, I missed this. This X takes me out of recipient preview. Now I'm done, I have put in my data. I have put in my people, I have put in what the envelope header should be, I've put in what the envelope message should be. I've double checked for all of the initials, signatures, check boxes, everything ready to go. And once that happens, all I need to do is click on send. And you'll then see a message pop up saying that the documents have been sent out. Do you want to sign this document now? Uh, no, but it says, here's a document that needs my signature, right? Because I put myself on it. So if I click on it and then click on sign, it's basically just gonna go through. I didn't actually drop any of my signatures in. So I can click on continue just to kind of take a look at it and then click on finish. Oops, I had a text box here that I didn't put in. So let me drop that in. And now I can click on finish and my work is done. If I needed to sign anything, if I needed to initial anything, if I needed to drop in any dates, right? And now you can see the envelope status. I have signed it. Now it's sending it out to Donald and Daffy for them to sign it. So you can see this envelope is now waiting for others. Once they sign it, you will get it back and it will say signed. And you can actually click on the document and you'll see the actual documents inside of the envelope from there. All right, so that's pretty much it for today. We have talked to you guys about uh, how to fill out your documents, how to fill out the envelope, uh, add the parties to the envelope, make sure the messaging is correct, 
how to add initials, signatures, text boxes, dates, etc., to your actual documents and then how to send them off. And that's pretty much it for today, guys. Day 21 of the Command 66 Day Challenge 3.0. As always, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I look forward to speaking with you in the morning. Thanks so much.